And good afternoon. I'm Tracy Sinclair. This is Chief Meteorologist Melissa Fry here with Alaska's News Source. And today is the vernal or spring equinox. We need some like confetti cannons, right? We did it. We did it. Yeah. Though I have to point out, this was pointed out to me this year, and I found this fascinating. We always talk about winter being the dark time of year and how it's just yeah. dark all winter. Actually, winter is when we're gaining daylight. It's That's true. when we first start gaining daylight. We actually lose all our daylight in autumn. In the fall, yeah. And then we start gaining it in yes. like the day after, you know, 11 seconds. Right. It doesn't <laughs> seem like much, but it is so <laughs> wonderful when yes. it actually happens. So um, spring. We continue to gain daylight from this point. All the way up to the solstice. All the way to the solstice. Which that first day of summer is when we also, yeah. I know, it, 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 I, <laughs> if you've ever seen me, if I've had to work on the solstice, you realize I get a very strange joy I about know. announcing that we're losing nine seconds of daylight. I don't know why, yeah. but I absolutely do. So let's talk a little bit about what the spring equinox is, I've yeah. got a few little fun facts I'm gonna throw in yes. and a couple questions for you as okay. well. So let's go ahead and talk about what's going on. Yes, yeah, so today is the spring equinox. That is a specific moment in time. So at 7.06 here this evening, that will be the spring equinox. That is when we move into the astronomical uh, spring season officially. Now a little fun fact for you, this is the earliest start to a spring that we've seen since 1896. And and that has to do with how our calendar works and because it is a leap year. So because it's a leap year, if today, uh, if it were not a leap year, today would already be March 20th, but instead it is March 19th. Uh, and since uh, we turned the century, we have had these earlier springs. Right, and so what happens, we were talking about what leap years when that happened. Um, we did um, talk about this a little bit, the fact that years, century years yes. that are divisible by 400 are not leap years. And so you need to do that because if not, um, you really get too far ahead and you actually start adding days to the calendar. And it takes, you know, a couple hundred years, but we would yeah. start to see our seasons slowly just shift. Just the reset and on a century right. year. And so we don't want to <laughs> do that. We just we yes. want to keep where we're at so that June continues to be the beginning of summer as opposed to if you kind of slid it we would end up having summer like in july would be our first day yeah. of summer and that that would be a little bit strange yes. for some of us okay back so to yes so today is that moment in time and yeah it's a little earlier than uh, than it is typically but here is what is happening so we know that for the past you know several months uh, that the sun's direct rays have been more directly pointed at the southern hemisphere opposed to the northern hemisphere and that's because the earth is on that tilt so because of that and the way we orbit around the sun, uh, it makes it so that the southern hemisphere in our winter months gets more of that sunlight. So as we move to the equinox here again tonight, uh, specifically just after 7 p.m., that's when those sun's direct rays will be pointed right at the equator. Uh, equinox is a term for equal night. So we're seeing equal day and equal night. So that is what's happening again tonight uh, when we officially hit that spring equinox which falls uh, again here just after 7 p.m. 706 specifically. Now from here, uh, we know that we're gaining daylight in the northern hemisphere. Those sun's direct rays are going to be uh, pointed more toward the northern hemisphere than toward the southern hemisphere. So they will enter into winter eventually and we will enter into summer. And you can really see this, of course, with our daylight. So I just want to show you uh, some daylight times that we are seeing here today from uh, Ukiavik all the way down to Hawaii. So you can see again, everything's pretty equal. See that line uh, dividing between day and night? It, it's it's parallel there and as we move uh, through the day in Ukiavik you'll get 12 hours and 18 minutes of daylight here at Anchorage we'll get 12 hours and 12 minutes Seattle will get 12 hours and 8 minutes all the way down to Honolulu 12 hours and 6 minutes so you can see uh, just about a 12 minute difference we're all pretty close to getting the same amount of daylight and so we were talking um, one of the reasons this is my fun little bit of trivia that I was fascinated by the reason that even though we say it's equinox equal night it really isn't there's always a little more daylight than that is because it's how we measure sunrise and sunset if we measured as the sun's coming up if we measured from the center of the disk it would be equal for the day for the equinox but because we measure from the top of the disk so it's a little bit earlier than that um, as it comes up and from the top of the disk as it sets that's why you get for us 
12 hours and 12 minutes. The day that is closest to 12 hours of daylight and darkness is called your Equilux, and it is a couple of days before. For Anchorage, that was two days before. It's on the 17th where we had 12 hours and 57 minutes of daylight, so really pretty close to 12 hours. And Utkiagvik also for you, 12 hours and 10 seconds of daylight. That took place two days ago as well on the 17th. So that was our Equilux when it really does get almost yeah. equal to what yes. we. And what's amazing to me is whether you're in Ukiavik or you're in Antarctica, it doesn't matter where you are on the planet, everyone, Northern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere, we're all at about 12 hours of daylight. Yeah, like you equinoxes. said, six, uh, like 12 minutes difference between yeah. from Hawaii all the way to Ukiavik is amazing. Yes. We're all equal on this day. And of course that happens again in the fall, on the fall equinox, same story. So we know that summer though is very different again, because we're getting more of that sunshine directly pointed at the Northern hemisphere opposed to the southern hemisphere so you can see uh, once we get to that solstice most of the lower 48 they are well into their sunset where we still have uh, quite a bit of daylight here across Alaska so look at these times Ukiavik again 24 hours of daylight on the solstice we're not too far behind 19 hours and 21 minutes here in Anchorage Seattle though less than 16 hours of daylight and then you get down to Honolulu really not that much of a change compared to what we're seeing today uh, they gain at 13 up to 13 hours and 25 minutes of daylight and again that's because they're closer to the equator so uh, the changes between the summer and the winter season are not as noticeable as up north right and what I, f I find I do find it fascinating when I'm traveling and I'm sure most Alaskans have experienced this as well where you um, it's like it's 630 and it's dark what? I, I don't understand yeah. this and it's every it's just weird for me it to be in weird. those places. I always think of that when I go to Hawaii, because you think, oh, Hawaii, it's tropical, it's warmer, there'll be more sunshine. And then the sun sets at 7 p.m. and you're like, wait, wait a minute, where's our day? Well, the other thing that um, I also find fascinating is that our seasons are caused because the Earth is tilted. Yes. If the Earth wasn't off its axis by 23 and a half degrees, we would not have seasons because the right now we are going to the point where we're being pointed toward, toward the, sun. the sun. So if the sun were just pointing at the earth the same way year round, uh, yeah, we would always be in kind of this equinox state. Yeah, so, and the other thing that I find fascinating is that um, right now the sun is for, w even though it's coming into our spring, it's going to be its farthest point away from us. Because you always yes. think it must be its closest point, but it's not for no. our, our summers sun's as far away as it can get. Yeah, the orbit around the sun, that's a whole other yeah. science lesson. Anything, but just, <laughs> I just find it fascinating. Yes, it is. Now, here in Alaska, we celebrate winter solstice. We celebrate summer solstice. Those are big moments in time for us. Equinox is kind of like, meh. Is it really spring? I mean, we have, what, two feet of snow on the ground. Yes. We know that we're going to continue to see snow uh, here for the next couple of months probably we see our average last snowfall into may so let's just break down where we actually are here on the calendar we know we've made it through most of winter we had that full spring we had the second winter i mean we just had another 1.4 inches of snow yesterday uh today we're at the equinox that's where we are but we know winter weather is still coming. Then we have that whole breakup season. That's a season in itself before we get to actual spring like weather. So here in Alaska, yes, the daylight is gaining, but we are still uh, on average seeing temperatures well below that freezing mark overnight. And so that's why we continue to see snow uh, through April, even into May. But you were asking me earlier, are we noticing any changes? Right, because in the winter, uh, Alaskans, we know this, that you, um, you wake up, you step outside a beautiful sunny day, it is still cold, in particular it's cold overnight because we're losing all yeah. that heat. When do we get to the point where that beautiful daylight actually starts Making impacting, a difference. Making a difference and <laughs> warming us up a little yes, bit. Yes, and we are already there. We're already starting to see that. You've probably noticed those low temperatures at night. Uh, they take a lot longer to dip below that freezing mark. So the warmest part of the day is actually right before the sun sets because that's when the heater has been on the longest. So right before the sun sets when we hit that high temperature. So that was, you know, 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. Now that's getting pushed back to 6, 7 o'clock in the evening. And then it's a little while before 
before we start losing that heat. But then when the sun sets, we drop. But then as soon as the sun starts rising, we start getting that heat again. So it's just like at your house when you flip the heater on. It's not hot instantly. You know, you ramp up to it. Uh, and then when you flip the heater off, it takes a little while to cool down. So we are seeing those impacts. Uh, our average high temperature right now is above freezing, about 33 degrees. Our average low is about 18. Uh, but we do typically still see at least some snowfall all the way into May. <sighs> Sorry, I'm ready But we for know my when we switch, we switch fast, right? It's always amazing to me every single year. You get into late April, early May, and then all of a sudden you go, oh, is, is, is that green? Do right. you see the green on the tree? And the buds start to pop. And then it's like you're in a time lapse. It happens so fast. Well, and, you know, we talk um, most years about green up, yes. where it, it is literally you drive to work one day and there's no leaves. And as you're driving home, poof, everything has come out. There it is. And it literally greened up in, in yeah. the course of 12, 24 hours. So yeah. it, it does happen very quickly. And even yeah. in the darkest hour, we know that spring will come again. And those of us with gardens will continue to look out our windows and hopefully that snow continues to drop. Yes. Yeah. And I think we really do get real spring, maybe not in March, but once we get into late April, May, it does feel like spring. There's places in the lower 48, like southern states, they never really get that spring for very long anyway, because then that heat kicks in uh, and they're in the triple digits and it's summer. So at least we, you know, it's a slow ramp up. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm all for it. Well, yeah. thank you very much and um, happy yeah. Equinox. Again, yeah. not a huge celebration. We're still gaining five minutes and 44 seconds of daylight here in Anchorage in Utkiagvik. I was looking this up just a few minutes ago, gaining nine minutes and 20 seconds. So that's the broad yes. range. If you're between Anchorage and Utkiagvik, you're probably hitting um, in those midpoints right there between of, of daylight. And we'll continue to gain five minutes and 44 seconds until the beginning part of April. Yes. Yeah. And that works out for us in Anchorage to be more than 40 minutes a week. So and you go on vacation for one week, you come back and we've already gained 40 minutes and then it ramps down as we get closer to the solstice. But it is really something wonderful and lovely, particularly yeah. for those of us here in Alaska where we really just appreciate um, all this out of daylight. I do yeah. have a friend that is determined no matter how she travels, she will be here on summer solstice because she lived through winter solstice. Yes. So she is going to be here for the longest yeah. day. Yes. Yeah. I try never to leave Alaska in the summer at all because right. it's too you? good. It's too good. Why would you? Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us um, here on Alaska's news source. We appreciate you checking in and we will see you tonight at four, five, six and 10 on Alaska's news source.